Hi, in this video we're going to show you how to install the Mac OS in Oracle VirtualBox. Um, but before I begin, I will say if you really want to play with Mac and you want to spend the money, do it in a VMware Workstation because it does a much better job of getting things going and it's just faster and smoother running overall. But if you like things free, you could do it in VirtualBox. Uh, it's, you got to do a little more steps to get it going, but it'll still work. Um, and you could probably also do it in VMware Player, which is free but you could only run one VM at a time. You could have multiple VMs installed and configured, but you could only run one at a time. But anyway, so we're going to do this in VirtualBox and show you how it's done here. So first we're going to create a new VM here. We'll call this Mac OS Monterey, because that's what we're going to do. And uh, type Mac OS and Mac OS. There's no Monterey version here, so I'm going to try the... Uh, newest one that it has, which is High Sierra. And then you could, you could also do it with the, just the generic one, but we'll try it with this one here. I've done it with this one before, but I'm going to try it with this for this video to see if it works any better. Uh, memory size, you could, you know, bump it up. Let's just give it about six gigs and create a hard disk now. Okay, click on Create. Okay, so here's the disk location. You could change that. The size, if you want to bump it up, let's just do 50. Uh, VDI disk image dynamically allocated. You can make fixed if you want. So we'll click OK or Create. Okay, so now we got to go into the settings. So if you need to change anything here, uh, like they recommend taking off the floppy, making sure EFI is enabled for under motherboard, and then processor, making sure to use two. I don't know if you really have to. That's just what they recommend. And and make sure that this PAE is enabled under processor, which should be by default. And then if you want to change anything else, video memory, I'd bump this up to 128. And, okay, then to storage, we're going to click on the uh, virtual CD-ROM here, and we're going to do the Monterey ISO file. I'll put a link in the description for where I got the ISO file. Um, there's lots of places you could get it, but I found that a lot of them were corrupt, so I was able to find one that actually worked, so I'll put a link for that. It was a 15 gig file too. So we'll click on OK. Okay, so now we're gonna start it up and I'll show you that it's not going to work here. And then we'll fix that in a minute. So when you, when you boot it up, it goes through all this stuff here. So this installation takes a long time, uh, much longer than installing Windows or Linux in VirtualBox. I don't know if it's because it's a Mac thing or if it's just because we're doing it in VirtualBox here. But I've done it on VMware Workstation and it seemed to take a long time as well. Okay, so when you do the uh, first um, boot up here with the ISO mounted, it's going to pretty much get stuck at this point here. So it's not going to go anywhere. So we need to make some adjustments to this virtual machine before we could get it running. So I'm just going to kill this here. All right, so we need to open a command prompt. I always like to do administrative command prompt. Okay, now we have a bunch of commands here. So first you need to navigate to your directory that you have VirtualBox installed. You can just copy this, right click to paste it, enter. Then what you need to do is change this to match the name of your virtual machine. So I have this here, so I'll put this in the description and you can just edit the the lines here to make it match yours and you have to do these one at a time so copy them and if it doesn't give you any error then you know you're good okay so now that's that now that that has been run let's get rid of this here and start it up again and see what happens this time Okay, so now we're at the part where we select our language here. So what you need to do, you can't just go ahead and do the install because you need to configure the disk first. So you click on Disk Utility and Continue. And it's going to find your uh, VirtualBox disk here. So what you want to do is you want to click on Erase. And then here, put the name of what the... Uh, this will be called, so then you have to do whatever you want. But it's kind of weird how your 
erasing it yet putting in the name for the new disk so it's kind of confusing so we'll click on erase here okay said erase virtualbox and created mac os so that's done so now we have our mac os base system there so we could exit out of this and now we could go install mac os monterey continue Okay, just agree here. Select the disk you want. So here's the new one we just made here. Okay, so now it's going to go through and install this. So we'll be pausing the video and be back when that is ready. Okay, so now it's rebooting again. All right, so now it's going to run through this installation, this part. Is the longest part right here, so 29 minutes or so, so we'll be back again. Okay, so now we're rebooting again. Okay, so now we just select our country. So let's go down to you here. Sometimes the keyboard is easier to use when the mouse is a little choppy here. Continue there. Uh, accessibility settings. If you don't need anything here, just click on not now. Okay, so if you're going to migrating from another Mac or Windows PC, you could go through that. But we're just doing a clean installation, so not now. Okay, so last time I did this, I signed in with my Apple ID, but I got a message saying incompatible iCloud device or something like that, and I couldn't continue. But I was able to choose setup later and just make a local account, and it was fine. So I think it's going to depend on which uh, version of the Mac OS you downloaded and which one you're trying to install. Because if you try and create a new one, like on this one, for example, it'll say that there's been too many Apple IDs created with this software. So I guess this one's been downloaded and used a bunch of times. So if you have a real deal Mac OS file, then you could you probably have better luck doing that. So I'm going to do the setup later option and skip it. Okay, agree to the terms. Agree again. Okay, let's just make an account called admin. Okay, so then you could add location services if you want, but it's probably not going to be not going to work on a VM here, anyways. You never know. Okay, don't use. Okay, select your time zone. I'm just going to go with the one that I picked by default because I don't care. Okay, I don't need to share anything with Apple. Okay, I don't care about the screen time, so we're going to set that up later. Okay, we'll leave Siri on just for fun. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. You can change it later okay, in system for preferences. Me. Not going to share any Siri's information. Okay, now you can pick your theme, light, dark, and auto. We'll just stick with the default light. Okay, keyboard assistant, so it's got to recognize our keyboard. All right, so we got to press the key immediately to the right of the shift key on the left, so that would be Z. And now we got to do the same thing for the shift key on the right side, so that would be the question mark. Okay, so that's what it found for our keyboard, North America, that's good. Okay, so now we have our Mac OS desktop with all our Finder and all the other good stuff and then you can start go ahead and playing around with it um, 
If you want to install the VirtualBox guest add-ons, that's going to be tricky too, depending on which version of the operating system you're using. And I found that it doesn't work anyways, at least not with uh, this one here. So let's see. Uh, first, I need to eject this ISO file here. Okay, now I could go to the devices, insert guest edition CD. Okay, open that up. Okay, so normally you do this VBox Darwin Editions package right here. And it looks like it works when you start it. Install for all users. Okay, click on install. Password for the account we just made. And it says it's failed. And then you could open your security preferences. And then there's an option down here at the bottom. Click to make changes on the lock. Password again. And then where it says uh, system software from developer Oracle was blocked and just click on allow. And then you could restart the computer, which we'll go ahead and do anyways just for fun. If you do this in a VMware, a VMware workstation, you got to do the same thing, but it actually works. And also in VMware Workstation, you could go ahead and download the uh, VMware tools as a separate ISO file. But I, I don't think you could do the same for VirtualBox guest editions. And even if you copy it from the CD to the uh, hard drive of the uh, Mac OS VM, it still doesn't make a difference. But we're just going to reboot just for fun and show you that it doesn't matter. Okay, let's log in. Okay, we'll try it again here. All right, so same thing. So maybe you'll have better luck finding a way to install the uh, guest add-ons. Now, that's also going to depend if they're even supported by whatever version of Mac OS you're doing this on. I think like the earlier ones, you can't even install it anyways, or it's not even an option. So, uh, you'll have to see what happens uh, when you try it for yourself. All right, so I will put a link to the ISO file, like I said. I'll put this uh, information here. You just need to change this to match the name of your VM, and make sure you uh, format the hard drive or, you know, remove the uh, VirtualBox hard drive and add the new one or, click, you know, do the erase option and add the new one and then name it whatever you want and then you'll use that for the install and then you'll be good to go and you'll see how it runs. Like I said, it runs much better in VMware Workstation, so if you want to spend the $200 for that rather than use VirtualBox, it works just way better for everything in my opinion, so up to you. All right, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe. Thank you.